What I want here is I want kind of the sweetened condensed version of, hey, here's a meaty problem that I was stuck on and we were bumping our our uh, heads and we were scraping our elbows against them while trying to solve this. And eventually we found something that worked really well. And I want you to be able to take that as motivation and inspiration. And I also want it to be practical application of how do we, how do I learn from that? And some of these are going to be extremely applicable to your situation. You're going to say, yes, I should do what Dean and Ryan at Worth did, or I should do what Marcus at Impact did, or I should do what Michael and Nicole at Mojo Media Labs did, or whatever, whatever those examples are. Kuba, how are you, sir? <laughs> doing great uh, today. We just got finished recording another, uh, like it's uh, an episode of a different podcast, and now into another podcast. Yay for batching, right? Here we go, agency breakthrough. So, yes. uh, welcome aboard. You're listening in a little conversation Kuba and I are having. This is very much not rehearsed, as as you can probably tell already. Kuba, what is a let's let's give the backstory? Maybe like what is agency breakthrough? So Agency Breakthrough is a new podcast we're starting in cooperation with uh, ClickUp. And me and Gray here will be hosting. Uh, hi, I'm Kuba Kreitzer, uh, head of marketing at ZenPilot. And this is Gray, co-founder at ZenPilot. Gray, say hi. That's me. Okay. So what we're trying to do here is to start a new podcast for agencies, because that's never been done before, and try and tell the stories of uh, the breakthroughs that agencies have had and to help our listeners learn from that and to kind of... Okay, I, I've got like a whole thing written out about this. Can I just read yeah. the, the official show intro? You do it and I'll give you your sar- sarcastic undertones, okay? <laughs> okay, so... <clears throat> Welcome to Agency Breakthrough, where we bring you real gritty stories of agency operators who found the path to get past the plateau. Great Love use of the word plateau. Oh, yeah, thank you. And the alliteration, have you noticed? <laughs> yeah, path, get past the plateau. Love it. Say yeah, I love path. it. Yeah, I love it because I wrote it. Whether it's hitting on a playbook for massive growth, scaling profit margins, or finding a way to have an agency and a life, nice. we're here to share how they achieved it and laugh a little along the way. I love, the, <laughs> I love how we kind of signal that this is going to be funny. Please laugh. Please, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're begging you. Go make us put the laugh track in. <laughs> yeah. Presented by Zen Pilot and ClickUp. And your hosts today are Jakub Greitzar and Gray McKenzie. And just because I'm mean, I put myself first and you That's second, Gray. Excellent. Well, well written. <laughs> I'm super excited for this. I mean, this all kind of stems from a conversation that uh, Gaurav Egerwal, um, who leads growth at ClickUp, and I had, we were together in San Diego uh, at the beginning of February and just talking about Hey, here's what we're doing in terms of marketing. Here's where you guys are going. And how do we, you know, one of, so ClickUp's got, do you know about the core four at ClickUp? The core four? No, you should enlighten so, me about that. So they've got these core four market segments, who they, who mm-hmm. kind of their biggest segments of customers are and where their focus goes. Um, and so the agencies are one of the the largest ones. By, if you just looked at uh, logos, number of unique companies, uh, probably the largest. I actually don't know if that's true today. Let's say that it's true. We'll just make it up. It's only presented by ClickUp as well. So their their endorsement is on this. I don't know if that's true. I would assume by headcount, that's not accurate or that, that it would not be the largest just because most agencies are you know in the SMB uh, space. So it's not the, the big enterprise clients where they've had a ton of growth here. But anyways, we were comparing notes. And we're like, hey, we should we should produce some content together, and we should do. You know, like we're trying to target the agencies who are focused on <clears throat> streamlining their ops and um, have a heavy interest in ClickUp as go to platform um, from a technology perspective. And they want more thought leadership, so they pick the wrong people. But basically, folks who have an inside scoop into agencies, which is the world that we've swum in, the world, the sea that we've swum in the world that we've lived in for the last yeah 12 years or whatever um and so anyways that led to kind of the that was the initial spark and you kind of took it and carried the ball from there what what was this experience like getting to the point where we're actually hitting record and, and we're into the first show 
Well, I remember the key point being actually coming from you because, well, we got in touch with ClickUp, right? We thought about what this is uh, going to be and who we want to reach. And we want to reach uh, kind of an agency audience here, what we like to call agency operators. And, you know, at some point we should have like a good piece of content to point you to about defining this agency operator uh, persona, (laughs) uh, building towards that. Uh, For me, the, the key moment was when we actually arrived at what is going to make this podcast different. And that's the idea of this breakthrough that we're going to focus on. So it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of brainstorming between uh, the two of us. And then a lot of feedback about this intro section that you just heard, (laughs) which I think is like the sixth draft of this or something. Um, So I thought, you know, I'm trying to think of who might be listening to this and like, how far do we go into definitions? But do you think, Gray, before we talk about why this is called agency breakthrough and why the breakthroughs, shall we like define... Click up, define Zenpilot, yeah. just, you know, the bare basics here so people aren't lost. Yeah. Why don't, uh, so I'll take Click up and you can take, I'll, I'll play Click up. Um, you play Zenpilot. Hi. Okay. My name is Click up. I'm an incredible project management software. I've grown uh, just with supreme velocity over the last five plus years. I mean, this has gone like seriously. So I uh, got to know Zeb. Uh, Chris Cunningham, the early team at ClickUp, way back like end of 2017, early 2018. And this is coming out of like, four guys moving out to a house in Palo Alto together and and working together. And then to go from that to a thousand people and raising all this money and growing just incredibly fast has been unbelievable to have kind of a, a you know a, a, a courtside seat um, to watch their growth. But ClickUp is... Um, the fastest growing project management uh, platform. They've probably expanded that. I should go look what's on their homepage right now. Uh, sorry, my homepage. I forgot. I'm clicking. Still says one after replace them all, all your work in place. So there's all these different names that, that everyone's coming up with. You know, is it work management? Is it productivity software? Is it project management? We don't want to just get bundled down into the project management space. And so ClickUp's built out this incredible uh, product, obviously, that's got tooling around all the, common project management stuff, tasks and docs and dashboards, but then around kind of the whiteboards. And that's been a, a huge area of investment. And we'll talk about, and I think the cool thing about us getting to do this from the outside, even though we're producing this with ClickUp, is we can kind of be, um, you know, hey, critical of, hey, here's the parts that that still need to be improved and need the most attention inside ClickUp. Yeah. And here's the stuff that we're most excited about um, on the platform. We're kind of able to yeah call out here's cool things that other tools have done so we'll talk about some of those later on but that's yeah. that's click up in a nutshell what is zen pilot okay so i mean first of all to put y'all at ease the the podcast here is not going to be about click up just you know we're working hand in hand uh to produce it uh and you know i'm happy to share kind of my own story of how it happened upon click up maybe later on or in a different episode what is zen pilot hello i am zen pilot and i saw and previously, I wanted to create my own project management software called Do Inbound. And then I realized that what agencies have a problem with primarily is not the tool itself, but the process and the people that are using the tool. So in order to kind of make that work, uh, I, Zen Pilot, decided on the best project management tool for agencies. And at the time, decided that is ClickUp and just decided to be the best team when it comes to implementing ClickUp for agencies and helping them get the most out of this tool and make it do things that you wouldn't have thought possible uh, with uh, with Why, ClickUp. Thank you. So and we yeah <laughs> and I have helped <laughs> uh, over twenty seven hundred agencies and counting to just streamline their operations in ClickUp and get more visibility, more productivity, more done faster, and all that good stuff. How did I do? That's amazing. Uh, first of all, I love that you take advantage of me so well. And uh, second, <laughs> secondly, great job. <laughs> we're we're going to go. <laughs> okay, we're dropping the personas. This is getting too confusing. <laughs> that, that's right. All right, Kuba. Okay. Why agency breakthrough? Uh, you're asking me. Well, <laughs> okay. So here's how I am interpreting it. Um, and kind of from what you imparted on me from this idea, which I want to point to you as the person that first said the words agency breakthrough, you know, all responsibility rests on you here. Uh, why agency breakthrough? Because sometimes what you need is that breakthrough moment that changes everything. 
the moment when you change one thing and it changes everything is the way I'm trying to phrase it consistently and failing. So uh, what I mean here is the, f- the moment when you find the lever that you can pull that just gives you outsized results or just the one framework or the one uh, mindset or whatever change, you know, sometimes it might be higher, sometimes it might be kind of refocusing, going broader, going narrower. The thing that you do that just changes your agency for the better, for good, and in a huge way. We want to tell those stories to invite, uh, to kind of, to inspire you, dear listeners, to find your own breakthrough moment. And your breakthrough moment is not going to be the same as our guests, probably. You know, it's not about, oh, they focus on PPC, so we should focus on PPC or whichever, you know. Uh, but just to share kind of the thinking behind what made this breakthrough possible so that you can have this thinking too. And you can also be on the lookout for the levers that you can pull and you know what you can take advantage of in your unique situation to have your breakthrough as well. So we're telling these stories so you can have your breakthrough. Uh, does that sound about accurate? That's right. So one of my breakthrough moments personally is our family started doing this thing where we do special time is what we call it. And it's one-on-one time, my wife or I, uh, one of us will take one of the four kids and we'll go on a quick date. And every Thursday morning, so we rotate through, we have four kids. So every eight weeks, uh, each kid gets to go with my wife and with me one time. So my daughter, Laurel, and I went to the library because she is an avid, avid reader. She's eight years old. And we were sitting in the library. She was reading a series of books. She was on a third out of four books. And I was doodling on my sketch pad and I wrote down agency breakthrough. And that's where the idea kind of started as, hey, there's all these agency podcasts. If you want to know a podcast, if you want to listen to a podcast about agency growth or how to market or how to hire or how to do ops or whatever else, or you want to hear yet another, the you know thousandth agency owner interview, just kind of talking about the general story. And I went to college and then I accidentally started an agency and then this happened and that happened. And now here I am 20 years later and I've got a 50 person team. That stuff's all out there. There's plenty of that. What I want here is I want kind of the sweetened, condensed version of, hey, here's a meaty problem that I was stuck on and we were bumping our our uh, heads and we were scraping our elbows against them while trying to solve this. And eventually we found something that worked really well. And I want you to be able to take that as motivation and inspiration. And I also want it to be practical application of how do we, how do I learn from that? And some of these are going to be extremely applicable to your situation. You're going to say, yes, I should do what Dean and Ryan at Worth did, or I should do what Marcus at Impact did, or I should do what Michael and Nicole at Mojo Media Labs did, or whatever, whatever those examples are. You know, I can go do that thing. Uh, and then part of this is just, hey, it's just fun to hear other people's stories. The the good is exciting. Uh, the bad is what gives it all the context, and it's the fun and the ability to kind of, hey, we're all wallowing through this together um, and in it together. So I, I'm i super excited to be hosting this with you, Kuba, and running it together. Can we talk about the three pieces, like three core pieces of the, sh- of the show structure real quickly? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're kind of leading to that, right? So the breakthrough, kind of the storytelling segment, let's say, that's going to be the middle of it. And for you to be able to contextualize the story, the first segment is going to be, I mean, we're experimenting with various approaches here. Maybe we'll talk a little bit first between the two of us before we bring the guest on. But once the guest is on, we'll first ask about kind of the context, you know, what is the scale of the agency? What are the numbers that they're willing to share? Just so you understand whether you're listening to an agency of 50 or 500 or however many uh, million in revenue. So you can kind of contextualize this in your head. So that's act one. What is the scale of this agency? And kind of numbers based and just, you know, giving an idea of the scale. Act two, what Gray just discussed, the breakthrough story. And, you know, just in a, in a simple chronological way. What was like before? What was the breakthrough? What is life now, uh, you know, after the breakthrough? And also trying to help you replicate this or replicate the thinking that led to it. How might somebody else have this breakthrough as well? And what are the pitfalls kind of along the way? Like if things had happened a different way, this breakthrough never would have happened. So that's kind of the whole second segment. And I find it funny that we're discussing this today because also, I mean, one of the <laughs> one of the parts of our thinking behind this show is that we want to iterate and experiment. So I wonder if we're going to be kind of laughing at this, you know, right. in a few months time that we oh, thought we the show was going to be like this, but <laughs> totally not. But still, the concept is 
first context, second breakthrough, third, uh, what <laughs> we're calling the crisp cornucopia. <laughs> so just a lot of rapid fire recommendations, you know, I mean, you, you must have all, all experienced this and we want to help you as well. Uh, to find new tools, new sources, new people to follow, because everybody has, you know, that secret tool or secret weapon that, you know, they never shared about. But actually, you know, there's this agency that we use for 70% of our content, you know, and they never shared about it. So we want to uncover that as well to to help you find the right people to work with, the, the right tools to, to work with. And that's going to be kind of the last part of the show at the end. Maybe some shout outs, maybe some uh, thoughts about who could be the next guest and, you know, interview all of the agencies that way. <laughs> right. I think our job is really to ask the tough questions that, that people want to know. Like those second and third and fourth order questions mm -hmm. are really where the magic comes from. Okay, it's great that you wrote a book and all of a sudden this stuff pops up. Like how accessible is that to the, basically all the reasons as we're... And this would be easy for me because I'm in that situation. Hey, I'm you know running and owning a professional services firm that's this uh, kind of in the in the typical size and has aggressive growth goals. But what are all the reasons that we instantly think this couldn't work for me, uh, or there's something special about you or your situation, or wow, you're just so lucky, and kind of throw that at uh, guests and figure out okay like you know how how can we help people really see that as something that is practical for them and it's not it won't be practical yeah. for everyone but but dig into that yeah i would be happy if you know we asked enough questions where our guests to some of them would honestly reply that part was just luck you know and that's right. why you can't replicate every breakthrough exactly you know this i prepared for you know that other obstacle i kind of surmounted but this other thing, if it had happened, the breakthrough wouldn't have happened and I got lucky. I think, you know, we have to be uh, honest about these stories too. That's a great uh, framework because I just think of a couple example breakthroughs. We'll probably have, I mentioned Worth earlier, Worth e-commerce. Um, we'll probably have Dean Dutro, uh, and Dean and Ryan, we'll, we'll grab one of them at some point and uh, bring them on the podcast. But uh, built a uh, email marketing agency together. Email marketing is no longer the cool way to say it. Now you got to call it retention marketing agency. Um, so email and SMS and then you know, whatever else that, that expands to. The names all, all change to the stuff about every 18 oh, yeah. months or so. So you gotta you got to make sure that you're on the, on the cutting edge, edge of that. But their big breakthrough was building the growth side of the business. So originally a ton of the work came from Upwork and they built a really cool mechanism for taking Upwork clients. And I've seen very few agencies do this, um, but take Upwork clients through a small, very clearly scoped project and then convert them into a monthly retainer. And typically Upwork fails because you've got extremely budget. People are there to find a discount uh, from 90% mm -hmm. of Upwork customers. And it's really hard to turn them from being the I'm here competing on cost to, okay, now I'm interested in quality and I want to work with you long term at a really profitable rate uh, for yeah. an agency. But they had a model for doing that, layered in outbound and wound up exiting and selling their agency you know, just a couple of years later at a, over a 7x multiple on EBITDA, which is unusual uh, as well for, you know, kind of the, the early stage um, agencies. I love to dig into their breakthrough because the piece that is um, harder to replicate is they were one of the first ones to really gain, gain traction and grow pretty big. And so their exit was at a point where the market was heating up. And I'd be curious to hear, you know, hey, if someone else builds the exact same looking business today, did they get yeah. the same kind of multiple on an exit and uh, an exit to that? In their case, they sold the smart bug. Um, but does someone else, are, are those opportunities the same? Are they better? Are they not? I don't know. Yeah, when, when you boil it down, all of these moves that you're making, they're an investment. And to get a return on an investment, you have to time the market correctly, right? So I, I do wonder what the guests are going to say about that as well. Which, so we've already got kind of the first batch, and we'll probably batch release the first set of episodes. Got our first handful of guests booked. Uh, who are you most excited about? Are the most excited about I'm Marcus Sheridan? Send, I'm, I'm going to clip this and send this to everyone else, by the way, who don't. <laughs> Sorry, I stepped on you. <laughs> Say it again. I am the most excited about Marcus Sheridan uh, of They Ask You Answer fame and from Impact. 
I don't know what to say here. I mean, <laughs> Marcus's book influenced me when I was a young marketer. I mean, still am by a lot of uh, <laughs> metrics, right? But, you know, at the beginning of my, of my marketing journey, I, I followed that book like gospel and like having an uh, opportunity to interview him on the show is just such a treat. I love it how you didn't even give me a chance to be cool with Marcus, but you already introduced me via email as the resident fanboy. But it's like, I would have gone that route anyway. You know, I couldn't sleep when I got the email where he said yes. So yes, so we're interviewing Marcus and that's the person that I'm definitely most excited about. And he's like also like, like a consummate public speaker. You know, I'm, I'm so passionate about public speaking. I did Toastmasters for a time and I just love to get on stage. So just having a chance to interact with somebody who's like, so much further on this path and doing keynotes and all these workshops, everything. Just just love everything about that. And I can't wait to record that. I had lunch two weeks ago. This rarely happens to me uh, because we're all remote and we serve agencies all over the world. But I had lunch with a client uh, two weeks ago. And uh, so we're talking about kind of the, the whole business. We spent some time on ops and you know we're, what we're doing on top of ClickUp, which is super exciting for them. And, um, and then we were talking about marketing and how they were growing. And so, you know, it's mostly referral based, but we're really leaning into, uh, content marketing. And I specifically really like this book called they ask you answer by this guy named, uh, Marcus. And I was like, Oh, tell me more. And, um, so anyways, <laughs> I, I didn't want to, you know, you just kill the conversation if you're like you my friend, Marcus, um, and it was so cool to hear that in the wild. Like, here's someone else. We've never talked about this stuff before. I've never made a recommendation and, uh, and is reading that. So I'm super excited to have Marcus and, and dig into his breakthrough uh, moment as well. Um, I, maybe what we can do is we can just spend a couple minutes. Like, one of the things that I like throwing at people, you said crisp cornucopia, and I was laughing. But it's like, what are, what are some of the recommendations that folks have? Um, maybe we could dig into some tool recommendations. Are you up for that? Yeah, definitely. I've got some stuff listed. Mine are not necessarily tools. I've got a, a course slash book slash podcast and a book slash course. <laughs> uh, but yes, let's talk tools and other recommendation stuff you can take away from this. I'm, I'm going to get yours first. But so I think tool recommendations, not that unusual, but doesn't happen on a ton of shows. But some, you know, Tim Ferriss, I think I'll popularize this. Book recommendations happens probably even more commonly. Service provider recommendations is one thing that I want to ask people about. Hey, we're all working in agencies. Who do you like for whatever? Accounting. Who do you like for project management consulting? Who do you like for sales consulting? Uh, hiring, HR, you know, like what are the best professional services uh, providers who you worked with? What is so? What do you have to recommend today? Okay, awesome. So, uh, the first thing that I have to recommend is building a second brain. I recently did a lunch and learn about this at Zen Pilot, and it's it's a few things. Recently, uh, Tiago Forte, the um, the person that kind of came up with the process, uh, the the concept, and popularized it, recently turned it into a book. Before it was a book. Uh, like I, I'm, I'm sorry, Tiago, but I, f I feel like the best way to get on this is the free podcast that there, that's still out there called Building a Second Brain. Just I think it's around ten like bite-sized episodes about the various concepts. But the concept in general is it's a comprehensive note-taking system. But what I like about it is that it leaves a lot of flexibility and room and a lot of ways that you can adapt it to your own needs. Uh, so I, it, it was a minor breakthrough for me when I started my second brain and I started just collecting all of the resources and thoughts and ideas and, and sources that I have for various areas of what's in my first brain, starting to put that in my second brain. So in a nutshell, the way it's organized is you've got, and you can adapt it to your own needs, right? But it's about capturing the stuff that you're seeing online or hearing in a podcast or, you know, you're, you're reading through a blog and something stands out to you. Put that in your second brain. Map it to an area. Do it for three months, six months, a year. All of a sudden, when you're supposed to do a talk about like marketing, for example, or leadership, you've got this whole catalog of like pre-screened content or, your, or just your own original thoughts that you can put together a presentation about whatever area is near and dear to you in minutes instead of hours. And, you know, in a meta kind of way, when I was supposed to do the workshop about the second brain idea, I used my notes from my second brain 
to, to put that together. So that's my first recommendation, not to go too deep into it, but you should look it up. And I recommend you start with the podcast, Building a Second Brain. Second recommendation, uh, I love to find ways to kind of recontextualize what I'm doing day to day, to find more motivation, to energize myself. And one book that's, I don't think, super, super popular, because I could talk about like Atomic Habits or, you know, uh, or maybe Tony Robbins stuff. I, I could, but here's one that maybe you haven't heard about. It's called The Alter Ego Effect by Todd Herman. Now, I am super into like comic books, Marvel, superhero stuff, and I have a very active imagination. That's one of the first things that the teacher said when I was at school. Like, he's cool, but sometimes he just gets lost in his own imagination and we can't snap him out of it. <laughs> anyway, the alter ego effect, the concept is that for various contexts in your life, so one context might be work, another might be sports, another might be family, another might be musicianship, for example. I play bass, so for me that, that tracks. For each of those, you come up with a, a, like a full persona that you embody when you're in that activity. So when you're in family mode, you imagine yourself as you know, one kind of character. So like for uh, uh, one character that I'm kind of following when I need to be kind of tender and caring is I try to be like Keanu Reeves, for example, <laughs> you know? It can be somebody real, it can be somebody fictional, it can be a character of your own invention, but just this, and there's research to back this up actually, when you embody this different persona, you start acting differently, you start having different thoughts, and ultimately that leads to different actions and different outcomes. So the alter ego effect, it's a simple enough concept, but I do recommend going through the book because it goes into much more detail of how to activate the persona, what kind of enemies the persona is, your alter ego is, is facing. It's just hugely inspirational and it really gives you this huge boost when you need it the most to, to activate your alter ego. So those are my two. I love that. I've never heard of them before, but I wonder if that, I saw a thread on uh, Twitter here at some point where someone had a bunch of different alarms set on their phone and each of the names of the alarms was that kind of the, the that personality. Too. Is that, Does that come from the book or is that someone's spinoff of the idea? So I suspect like, that I'm going to work out at 6 a.m. So my alarm at 545 says rad dad bod time or you know whatever identity I want to go adopt. Yeah. The one I saw was like 445 was like beast mode. And then I think around eight or nine when work starts is like full focus. And then the after work it was like best dad ever. Yep. You know, so and yes, these are the kind of you know personalities that the personas that we need to kind of embody. Is that related to the book? I don't know. I've sure. seen more than one Twitter thread that seemed very heavily inspired by the alter ego <laughs> effect, but not mentioning it, you know, to the point that it kind of quoted the same research. Like yep. I was, I even responded to one of those like, hey, you seem to be like referring to something, but not naming it by name. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes, like people catch on to this and then they share about it as well. I have shared right. about this on my own LinkedIn as well. And on right. TikTok. I used to do TikTok for a spell. So <laughs> oh, they bring that back. Yes. I need to find this. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I yeah. have three. All of mine are tools. I'll keep these pretty quick. First one is Reflect, reflect.app. And it is basically my, where my second brain um, winds up. The stuff that's not in. So ClickUp's all the team, all the work, all the tasks, even my personal tasks, birthday reminders, that kind of stuff is inside ClickUp. Reflect is uh, all of my notes. It's got awesome bi-directional linking um, and is really easily searchable and super low friction to use. A tool that I love using in conjunction with it is called Super Whisper. And this is one, have you heard of this? No, I haven't. Super early early on. I don't even know if this is a, a business versus just a, like someone's toying around to build it for themselves. And it's out there. It's superwhisper.com. It's probably Mac only. I don't know. Uh, I think it is actually. I had to download it and plug it in. Uh, I wish I could screen share it right now. So in my menu bar, I have this little triangle. And when I press the keyboard shortcut or I just tap on it, all it does is there's a little green dot that's, or I'm uh, sorry, red dot that turns on and it's recording. And then I press it again or I hit my keyboard shortcut and it stops it. And it just copies whatever I just said to the clipboard as text. But it is uh, crazy fast. And uh, so it's, it's not instant. I was going to say instant, but it's not truly instant. It's like, I don't know, half a second or a second behind, depending on how much you record. But the transcription is like 100%. It's perfect transcription of wow. whatever you're doing. Um, I haven't dictated anything super, super. Like I haven't taken 
you know, a, a five paragraph thing and dictated that out yet to see how to slice it up and punctuate it and whatever. But the text itself has been spot on every single time for me. So that's super helpful. I just want to record something and I want to paste it in, do a, whatever, a Slack message, click up into email, into wherever else. Uh, superwhisper.com is what I use for that. And so then, question about that. Yeah. So does it, tra- it transcribes word for word. It doesn't do like what AI sometimes does, like summarize or, you know, no. tamper with it. Anyway. That's all, all it does right now is just literally word for word transcription. For okay, I've gotcha. used that with ChatGPT a good amount. Say, say my prompt out loud and then just command C, command V into ChatGPT. There we go. Okay. Um, my last one. And you'll notice a theme here around productivity, but text expander. Do you use a text expander tool? And did you use one prior to ZenPilot? I haven't prior to ZenPilot. And actually, just this week, I started using it for the first time. Yeah. Also related to ChatGPT. I have this whole, this is, this is a nice prompt. tip, I hope, for the listeners. I have this prompt save that has just a lot of context about ZenPilot because, I mean, go figure, I end up using ChatGPT for ZenPilot at all, uh, a lot, right? So I don't want to have to explain kind of the target audience, the, you know, the service lines, the size of the company, et cetera, each time. So now I have this prepared kind of this big chunk of text that's like, here's what ZenPilot is again. I have saved that as just, you know, ZP prompt template or something, and via text expander, just paste itself right in there. So yes, I started using it uh, recently, but that's just the first use case I found for it. Uh, you should talk about how it's used at ZenPilot because it's like much more comprehensive. So we use it for a ton of stuff. I started with text expanders, just like, like if I type QEM. In fact, I was at um, out at ClickUp HQ in February, and I'm typing on someone else's computer, and I'm putting in my email address for them, and I typed QEM. They left it and they were like, wait, what's, what's your email at? I was like, what do you mean at like my handle? Are you talking about Twitter or something? And they're like, no, what's your email? Like QEM at what? And I was like, no, 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 it's not QEM. It's grades. I'm probably talking. Oh, I typed QEM. Cause that's my email. Like that automatically expands grades. I'm probably talking. Q phone. Oh, that's my phone. Q Addy does my, uh, my phone number. Q LinkedIn does my LinkedIn or whatever. Uh, profile. So there's all the really, really, really basic use cases like that. Hey, I just want to type three keys and have it expand this yeah. 20, 20 the, character thing. And the powerful thing is about this, like when you have company wide adoption of this, if you change anything about your company and everybody's using the short, you know, form for it, then you don't have to do so much work communicating because people are going to be using the same shortcut and just getting different output. Like, let's say the official company address changed, you know? You could yep. bury that in a wiki or just update the text expander prompt and people are going to see that the output is different. Like, instantly, everybody gets updated on that, you know? And nobody wants to spend time digging through a wiki to find the official company address. So it's faster and it's more consistent. And that's really a rare find. Out of office forms intake forms like what, whatever else uh urls all of that stuff well then you take it to the next level and you text expander is one of the most powerful it might be the most powerful text expander i don't know and like i use raycast we could, we could talk about a, a bunch of different tools that probably have some of this functionality built in but what's cool is you can have these little modals pop up that pre kind of have spaces for where, hey i need an input here um, you can also have it hit mm-hmm. characters on your keyboard. So, for example, there's a form that I have to fill out uh, a couple times every week. And I type uh, four things, uh, four characters, and it goes through. And it, so it fills out the first field. And all these fields are sequential in order. Then it hits tab on my keyboard, automatically goes to the second one, fills that in, hits tab, hits tab, hits tab, hits tab, tab, and then enter at the end. Um, uh, I actually have a prompt where I have to enter in something and then I have to hit. Uh, tab and then it tabs through the rest and hits enter and submits it for me um so it's it's just a well, kind of a really simple way to automate um some of life you're exactly right it does help keep kind of brand uh solidarity or consistency across the team yeah. but mostly a, a productivity thing yeah so any kind of text that you find yourself grabbing from a doc you know in another window on another screen you could just be using text expander for it what you're mentioning here it really is reminding me to use text expander more because once you set it up and get that habit it just keeps paying off in terms of seconds and minutes saved what do you if, if anyone else is listening uh i'm sorry is using text expander who's listening send us an email to 
uh, breakthrough at zenpilot.com. And let us know, what do you use as your starting key? Like for me, I use Q a lot or I use a period, um, but primarily Q because you know, I'm never going to type QEM for a word or anywhere else. So pick whatever you want your starting thing to be. And then that allows you to keep your, what your inputs can be extremely short, um, which is super yeah. nice. Have you seen, go to typingmind.com. Typingmind.com. Have you ever heard of this? I can't, I can't remember if I've ever shared this with you before. Better UI for chat GPT. I'm sold. I don't need to know anything <laughs> else. So you can, uh, there's a paid version. You can download this. You can use your uh, chat GPT API key. You can just use the web version as well. But uh, so this guy, Tony, um, who is awesome, he has built a bunch of these different kind of micro tools. And this one is getting a ton of his attention right now. Um, he's done a really good job with this. But one of the cool, he's got a bunch of cool features kind of on top of it. Let me see. Uh, in March, he hit, let's see, he released the MVP of this thing on March 6th. He hit 10K in revenue on March 10th. Um, I'm trying to see if I've got, I don't have any inside scoop here on what his revenue is right now. But anyways, Typing Mind allows you to have all these, the, there's a whole bunch of custom prompts built into it. So you just press that and your prompt is already there. You can save your own as well. So if you weren't using Text Expander, something like Typing Mind uh, could also work for quickly plugging in your prompts. And then, yeah, you can dial in the temperature and all the other kind of customizations on top of it that you can do, which is pretty cool. That's great. I need to have a closer look at this uh, off the call, but always nice to get a tool recommendation like that. All right. We could do a million tool recommendations. Let's, oh, two million. Let's close this thing. <laughs> let's close this thing out. I think format wise, uh, with where we go, I'm super excited to have folks like uh, download um, all the rest of them that are available. Go listen to. We're going to release here the first uh, five of them all together. Uh, so go listen to those. Let us know. Email us breakthrough at zenpilot.com how we can change the format, what works well for you. What do you love? Do you love the recommendations? They're really tactical. Like, oh, I can go type this in. I can buy this book on Amazon. I can go download this app. Uh, what, what questions do you want us to push harder on? in the breakthrough itself. Um, we'll love to toy around with some of those things. Kuba, what else do we have here as we wrap up? Yeah, definitely send us thoughts on breakthrough at zenpilot.com. It's almost as if we like they ask you answer as a concept ourselves. And we want to serve you, our audience uh, here, right? So uh, definitely share your thoughts and we'll keep that in mind as we're recording these. Even the format itself uh, right now is... You know, we have an idea, but we'll see how it develops over time. Uh, so if you have thoughts about, you know, maybe you could do a segment on this, segment on that, uh, we're open to that and let, let's discuss. Other things, I think it would be uh, useful to remind the audience uh, just who this is brought by, uh, just so, uh, you know, to contextualize. So again, this podcast, Agency Breakthrough, is a cooperation between Zenpilot and ClickUp. At Zenpilot, we help agencies streamline operations, and we do that by helping them implement ClickUp, but also uh, improve their processes, finally get those SOPs and templates in order, and to train the team. So there's like a cadence of daily, weekly, monthly checks to make sure that everything is in the system and tagged right in the system. We help with all of that and more for huge productivity and profit gains. And great, two words about ClickUp. Yeah, well, I'm ClickUp, just to remind you all. I am, oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, the go-to and fastest growing project management tool for agencies. Um, if you're listening and you're not already using ClickUp, do yourself a favor and go to ClickUp.com and check me out. I was going to say check them out, but check me out, obviously, <laughs> or or go to ZenPilot.com or and look for the ClickUp for Agencies guide. We've got this awesome 47-page, uh, totally free guide. There's a long 4,000-word blog post that I originally wrote a couple of years ago that's been updated a number of times since then, a million resources that we're putting out to help you uh for folks who whether they want to use our services or they just want to use all the free stuff uh there's not a ton of secrets uh there's some really cool stuff behind the scenes especially around reporting that we wind up doing but there's really uh a lot of this is like hey you just got to get the basics in place the the coolest i mean the thing to understand about a tool like ClickUp, if you're coming from a trello or a base camp or an asana or something very simple um you can get overwhelmed by how powerful 
uh, ClickUp is. Yeah. And you've got all these, it's the curse of freedom is really what it is. Like, oh, I'm free to do, set it up this way. I'm free to set it up that way. And that is exactly what we love about it is, mm-hmm. hey, if you're a design team or a dev team and you need to see, you know, your board view and we're trying to move stuff through and statuses, that's great. And if you're a project manager or you're super detail oriented like I am and you want a long list or a table view, you've got that. And if you're a creative and you want a whiteboard view, but you want to all be using the same core data, we're still working with tasks and they could all be in the same place. That freedom is amazing. And people um, who are new to the platform figuring out how to use the hierarchy best and how to use views and dashboards best, those are the three, and custom fields, those are like the, the four core key features that, that you kind of need to wrap your head around. And so we're just trying to shortcut that learning for people and help explain, hey, here's, here's why and here's how. So zenpod.com, yeah. look in the header. I just, I just have this places. distinct feeling... I have this distinct feeling, Gray, that you're like extremely excited about ClickUp. Maybe even enough to start a company all yeah, around. I don't it, know. That'd be fair to say. <laughs> it might be a step too far. All right, that's uh, <laughs> that's absolutely true. I'm a. Um, I like to think that I'm a fair uh, fanboy. That I am 100% rooting for um, for ClickUp and the whole team. And at the same time, our job and who we get paid by is our clients and so our job i mean this has been our standard since the beginning what's the best tool for most agencies most of the time that's where we're gonna go focus and so that that led to click up all right anything else for you let's wrap this up uh follow zen pilot follow click up follow me follow gray (laughs) and those are the ctas for today we're really excited that you either you know listen to the very first episode of agency breakthrough or you went back to listen to the first episode that puts you in a very exclusive club so welcome and we hope you're going to enjoy the ride as much as we're enjoying it here we'll see you in the next one uh probably with our first guests or you know whichever else is next up in your favorite podcast platform this has been a blast great thank you for the time perfect thanks kuba